Configuring 40 gate captive portals firewall authentication portal In this video we will be using our 40 gate unit to authenticate our users before we give them access to the internet This gives you ability to intervene with http https traffic and have your firewall act as an authentication portal so you can make sure you are giving your teams a specific access to a specific outbound connections this is something that you can use also for guest Wi-Fi access or limited user access in your environment. And back to our 40 gate lab on GNS3, we will be using both the Windows client and the Ubuntu client to validate our limited and restricted access to the internet through the authentication portals. First, let's log into our 40 gate unit at the original site. And inside the firewall, we will be limiting our access on this sales team on board 2 because this is where my two clients live. They are behind board 2 on the firewall. So we essentially going to configure the 40 gate to have an authentication portal at the board 2 level. So any traffic leaving from this area under board 2 will have to authenticate to the firewall first before getting access to other areas. And authentication can work in different ways. We can either use local accounts on the 40 gate itself, and we can also use a remote user or a remote group from an Active Directory server or another authentication server outside your environment. And we will integrate with Active Directory for single sign on in the 40 gate advanced course. But for this video, we'll be using local accounts to test the same functionality and to validate access to the internet. So back to my 40 gate unit, I will be configuring my captive portal on board two. And the way we configure this from the GUI, we have to go down under security mode and we have to enable the security mode on this interface. Now it's gonna ask us for our security mode. That's where we're gonna choose captive portal. And we're gonna keep this local to the firewall. And we can either restrict to a specific group or allow all users. In here, we can restrict to a specific group. As we don't have any groups right now, we're going to create a new group. And here, we can either assign it to a 40 gate single sign on or a radius group or a guest group. For this, we will be using a firewall because this will be a local account on this 40 gate unit. And this, we will call it sales team. And as for our members, in here we can define users or remote users. We can create a new user in here of the type user. And we have a lot of options in here for which kind of users we can create. We are interested to create a local user for this specific video. And we're going to call this sales guest because we want to use this account to allow our guest users to access the internet through our authentication portal. And here we can give it a password as well. And finally, we can configure 2FA or SMS notification, or we can add an email to this account. And we will allow this to be enabled. And we click submit. So finally, we can choose our new user sales guest to be part of our sales team group on the 40 gate unit. And we hit OK. Now we have our first restricted group. So now everybody under board two will not be able to get past board two on the firewall without being part of this team, which requires a specific username and password to allow this communication. Finally, you can add exemption. So for example, if you want users to be able to access some common shared network resources or specific company related website, you can still exempt these resources in here. So let's try to add an exempt for the firewall itself to be able to test this feature. I want to allow this specific IP address to be exempt from this authentication so that if something were to go wrong, you still have a chance to access the box and modify your settings and you don't lock yourself out. So I want to create a new address. For my firewall IP, I just want to call this object firewall IP. 
And I want to add my IP in here, add a slash 32 mask. And uh, I want to use this for my exempt resource. And now if I open my Windows client again, and try to access any resources on the internet, it's going to show me an error now because I have not yet trusted the FortiGate certificate. And this is something that we have to do to remove these kind of errors. But if we still go on the page, now we still have to authenticate to the FortiGate box before giving access to the internet. So let's try to put our username and password in here. We already created sales guest for this and we created a password for this. Once we bought our information, now the FortiGate is going to authenticate us and allow us to go through. Now, if we try to access a new website in the same device, we don't have to enter the password another time because we have been authenticated for a specific timeout value on the firewall, which is very good. Now, if we go back to our FortiGate under monitor, there is an option for firewall user monitor. And here you can see that your sales guest from your sales team group have been actively using this specific username for one minute and 17 seconds. This is their IP address and that's how much data they have consumed. You can pretty much come to a specific user and de-authenticate. This way you kick them out of their authentication session. And now after we de-authenticated our user, we can try to access any website again. And now we have to go through the authentication portal one more time to allow us to go through our system. But I want to show you now that we still not authenticated yet, let's try to access our firewall using the IP address. And as we exempt this IP address from our authentication portal, I'm able to access this FortiGate management IP directly. And the other website is still asking me to authenticate. So now let's see how we can customize this message. Let's go back to our FortiGate and we go under system replacement messages. In here you will see all the different portals that the FortiGate uses. And we have our login page in here. And this is where you have your HTML code and style for your FortiGate authentication portal. You can also modify the images from here by clicking manage image and you can create a new image. Let's call this logo. So in here I did add a logo and I click OK. And now I have this as my logo and then we can go back and go back to our login page. And as we see in here, there is a part for the logo in the style section and the image is referring to the logo of the Fortinet. So in here, we can just come here and remove this part and change this to logo. And this way we modified our image. We can modify any of the other settings as well by modifying this from username. We can say team and secret key. So this is customizable. You can change it to meet all your needs. And then once you hit save, now you have a new FortiGate authentication portal style for your users. And now we can test it from our Ubuntu machine as well. If we try to access any website, it's gonna ask us to open the network login page. It shows us our new logo, our authentication message. But before we authenticate, let's make sure we can access the firewall and that our exception policy is working by putting the FortiGate IP address in here. And as expected, we are able to access our exempt resources without authenticating, but anything else you have to authenticate by putting our sales guest account and password. And after the authentication completes, now we are able to access our internet again for this specific session. We go back to our monitor, firewall user monitor, we see that this specific username on the FortiGate has been used from a different IP address and they have this much traffic volume. We de-authenticate them from this site as well. 
And if we try a different website, now we have again to open our authentication portal and authenticate to be able to access the outside internet. And that's how you configure captive portals on a 40 gig device. Thank you for watching.